Good evening all, Stippling Vaughn, and I promised you guys I was going to do a review of Starlight Cats, and that's what we're going to do. First and for foremost, uh, let's go through all the stuff that you got from back in the book, and this is just a basic level. I didn't go for the really high level, I went for the basic level for just the book. Uh, moving forward, um, I think I will get the supplementals because I didn't get the supplemental for this campaign I missed out on it um, you have to keep in mind um, I am still within year one of bagging books through Indiegogo and so I'm still a novice compared to other people who have videos and do videos and are very active in the CG community okay um, this is year one for me and so I just went with the basic book. I think it wasn't until it's was too late that I saw of one of Shane's streams and he actually started going into what the supplemental contained, which maybe I missed it when I was reading the campaign. Maybe it wasn't there. I don't know. But apparently it has a separate story involving Barnaby and it had other things such as like uh, tutorials or in, uh, or in drawing cats and such. So moving forward maybe I will start getting the higher campaigns with the uh, ash cans and the supplementals okay um, but we're just going over the basic campaign and it was the basic cover so that's the reason why I got it so late but again this was a basic what I this is just the basic backing and I got the salty balls sticker which very nice you got multiple cards we have the salty card the Barnaby card the Cadmus Prime card and the Rebecca card okay um, didn't have jelly bean didn't have uh, the girl cat um, so okay so I don't have them all one thing I am definitely going to be doing is I'm definitely gonna make sure I have that email so I can get the lenticular card of for when I do in glory when they do in glorious Rex. Okay, um, I'm very anxious about that card. Okay, so because I'm very excited, they're gonna have a 24-hour variant, and what they'll do is after 24 hours, it'll then periodically drop for like an hour to be available. Um, because I have this, I'm going to be getting this email, okay, I'm not going to be racing to be backer number one, backer number 12, backer number 30. I don't care if I'm backer number 300, backer number 3,000. I just want to make certain that the email that I'll be given and provided to get this tier, this specific type of card goes through. So I do get it. Okay, that's a concern of mine. Okay, and it should be a concern of yours, um, particularly like I said, this is my first year, and this is like one of this. This and Black and White are probably the first two books where I put the request in to get. I put I put myself on the email list to get the ability to get that stuff. Okay, and uh, we all know that Art Adams had. I'm sorry, Art T Bear had issues with his campaign using a monkey box or whatever it is paper monkey male monkey whatever the heck it is okay and so he's giving it to everybody so I don't have to worry about whether I do it right or not with this campaign with them successfully doing it uh, for this campaign they're going to be doing it for Inglorious Rex I'm going to make certain that I get that I back it correctly so I get the card so but another goodie you get just for backing because he did the campaign did so well is you get this pull out poster and very impressed again liked it a lot um, so that one and then you have the back side with the hang in there so just overall very, very nice. 
and then of course you have the one sheet for Inglorious Rex. So it was on a hard card stock, has a nice sheen to it. Again, this is one of those I saw Shane doing it during one of his uh, live streams. In fact, if I remember right, this was a live stream with just him, I think Leroy, and Patrick Parnell. I was just the only thing, and I think he, he just, he didn't, he, the camera wasn't on chain at all. It was on this the entire time. And I think when Patrick was working on his, when, he, when camera, it was just of him working. I don't think it was actually of his face. So the two guys were just basically just bullshitting online for us to listen to and watch while they drew now we're going to get into the book okay um i enjoyed it very much okay um like i said when i did the unboxing video one thing i think would have worked really nice on this is if they'd done a foil or a spot varnish on here and in here i think it's all that would have been needed to really help make that whole thing pop. But again, that's Shane's choice, I think, overall, for his very first. And that's another thing also to keep in mind, is that this quality of everything, okay, is that of a veteran who's been doing this for quite a while, okay? This is Shane's very first campaign. And the results are spectacular okay this is a high quality book okay um the f oldest fundraising book i've gotten would have been shane would have been uh, ethan's blood honey okay and it wasn't as good as this book okay and ethan's been very honest about it, how he has he's actually gone back into the current campaign he's got going on the uh <clears throat> The uh, store folio box campaign, it's given a chance to make corrections. Okay. Um, again, it's perfect bound. And this is what I, not a lot of people have done this. Okay. I thought this was really nice. Okay. So we have written by Shane and Yanzi, penciled by Shane, inked by Yanzi. Uh, colored by uh, Candace Hahn and Jason Wright with the lettering by Eric Weathers. Okay. Um, the artwork, <clears throat> very nice. Um, it reminds me of his, uh, of, of his JLA books um, more so than when he did his uh, Red Lantern book uh, or when he did Metal Men. Yeah, I see this more towards the JLA stuff he was doing. He was doing the uh, uh, the filler issues. But one thing I really like is the detail in the wrinkling and how they took the colorist, took and continued the where the where the wrinkles left off with the coloring with the tone. Um, how I do mine is I would actually go in and change just those two lines, okay, maybe like a third line down here. And then the colorist puts it in. I would do the full tone of the entire folding of it with the dots, with the stippling. But that's my style, it's not Shane's. And again, just how he does the wrinkling. Uh, how he does the kids. Um, kids are not easy to do. Um, they are very hard. Um, that little girl that um, did the her and her dad did that video to try to get one of the to get the uh, campaign sign up card from Shane and Yanzi. Okay, um, she's of the right age to perfectly model, and she does sounds a lot like that. That if they needed a model just for, for standard shots, she would be ideal for it. Um, I know Shane's going to get much better each year if he continues with this book as his own daughter gets older. So, um, 
just overall, and I'm not going to go any really past this page, except I will go past one more page. Um, at this point, pretty much everybody's received their book and everybody's gotten it. Um, if you want it, you're going to have to get it uh, when you back in Glorious Rex. So, again, so you have the cat is now transformed, now a uh, shock trooper. And overall, I mean, really this book from, from this point forward, uh, Shane got off easy. Uh, they go to outer space, and when they go to outer space, <clears throat> he doesn't have to worry about referencing anything. It's all pretty much made up. Uh, he has to focus primarily just drawing the cats and the little girl. And he does a quite good, very good job of that. Uh, overall, with just the story, um, I thought it was really nice. I, it was a surprise. I thought uh, because of how... Let me pull out the poster again. Okay. The reason why I'm pulling out the poster is so we don't have to damage the book showing you the back. Okay. Um, because they made it such a big deal about how you had Rebecca and the Starlight Cats, but then he made there was a big different big deal about the Merlion. Merlion. Um, I thought it was kind of like a Voltron thing where they joined together to form the big space lion. Um, I was wrong. Really surprised about that um, because it was not what I expected. Um, and then the end end, um, during the book, we had introduced this Cadmus Prime as the big bad. And yeah, I thought for certain that they were going to do the reveal, the big reveal at the end was, uh, uh, you being there with him taking off his helmet and you seen who Cadmus Prime is uh, changing around so you wasn't so you didn't see who this is but you uh, are introduced to something completely different was a big change uh, was not expected and quite honestly I was really surprised by it and I really I love the artwork of that page um, again it's it's hard to do a good accurate book review without giving stuff away so please understand I'm not I'm not being a dick it's just one of those where it's like you don't you want to be respectful to those who haven't read it and the whole point of a good book review is not to give away everything that happens in the book okay but to provide an honest opinion of the book with the hope that if you liked it it will spur others on to want to read it and to go out and get it. And if that means that they have to go out back and they have to go back and back it through Glorious Rex, awesome, great. You're not missing out. And the other thing also, which I really liked about this book, is this book was a good book for everyone, not just adults, but for kids. Uh, Patrick Parnell, he's already he's got a daughter, and she already was like how much she likes it. Um, I'm sure eventually that uh, even though Ethan is very protective and he doesn't allow his, girl, his kids on TV, um, I would not be surprised if eventually uh, he does or in one of his podcasts. Uh, announce how he's read it to his daughter and how much she liked it okay this is a good book for kids this is a good book to get kid to introduce kids into comic books okay uh, there's no profanity um, the reading level is intentionally done so that there were uh, so it's geared for kids uh, remember one of the problems we have is, like, we have, like, that I'm Not Starf Starfire book and how it's, the artistically, it's geared towards kids. But yet, they're using profanity in it. 
hardcore profanity. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't poke the mama bears by thinking you're being clever and sneaking it in. Okay. You will get a world of hurt once parents are alerted of what you're doing. Okay. Your parent, parents are going to be wanting, being using this book to introduce their kids to comics. And that's what we don't have. And this is what we're going to, and this is what we have. Not just a book that we as adults can enjoy, but also we feel safe presenting this to our kids. Okay? So, without going too far into it, <clears throat> I don't, I will not. Um, give me a moment here. I need to. Okay. Uh, the supplemental book, the cover is this page here and it says bonus materials so after that we go into the back of the book so we are told we got one of the other covers from Shane and Yanzi we have uh, another cover which is this cover that I had I got from Shane and Yanzi um, we have this one here by John Malin and Kyle Ritter <coughs> Kenneth Roqueford for did this one here and then we have some black and white pages which he's already shown us too okay and again this is uh, Cadmus Prime and again yeah you know you, you were thinking you were expecting okay this uh, Darth Vader looking character uh, to take the helmet off and then we see it I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to be one of those deals where uh, it happens in the second book and we are told back history of this why okay uh, if it is even indeed a cat maybe it's not um, then we get into again we get into uh, more pages to the back um, okay I, you can't see that okay in fact hold on hold on hold on there this was a really important page to me, in my opinion. Okay, now, full disclaimer. I'm not a cat person. Never claimed to be a cat person. Told my girlfriend at the very beginning, I am not a cat person. Henceforth, the little guy behind me can just bite my ass, and he knows that. So, but this was a really good page. Okay. <clears throat> He did a special thanks to his cats. But here's the thing, okay? When he does book two of the Starlight Cats, okay? When he does the launch of the campaign, okay? By the time he does the launch of the campaign, he'll have his book completely fleshed out, okay? Or at least laid out, okay? And let's say he has at least one page where... Either Barnaby is given an impassionate speech to all to let's say to a whole crowd of of cats, or the cats are celebrating the defeat of the bad guys with the Starlight Cats, and you have a whole page of cats celebrating. Okay, and Shane and Yanzi they look at that and they go, okay, we can fit about uh, 25, 30 cats on that page. Part of the campaign that they can do is they can have it, hey, for uh, $200, you send us a picture of, our, of your cat, we'll have it in the uh, cat celebration page. Or we'll have in, we have a, in, the, in the cat crowd page, your cat can become a character in this, in this book. Okay? People love cats. Okay? I know a lot of people backing this book one of the reasons why is because uh, because they're cat people okay cats and kids second most to dogs would be cats and kids okay and so you think about it if you had a campaign where you had, a, you had the opportunity for your precious cat to be in the book don't be surprised if you do it or what if the what if in the book two they're fighting dogs Okay, America loves dogs more than anything else. Okay, second only to kids. 
okay? And you're going to have a big uh, stand, you're going to have a big sh uh, a big fight between the cats and dogs. And on one page you have the starlight cats charging, and on the other page you have a army of dogs charging them. And let's say you can fit about 30 dogs on that page. Okay? For $200 you can have your dog as a character in this book. Okay? They don't need to know that that on, that on this page you have the starlight cats. On this page you have the army of dogs. Or on the follow-up page you have all the dogs being killed by the starlight cats with their laser weapons. They don't need to know it. All they know is their dog's going to be in the in the book. This ha showing this so we can see how he did the likenesses of the cats in the book. Okay, very important. Okay, because you're going to have a lot of people. If he goes, I've got 30 spots for a dog for for cats to be in my book. He's going to fill those slots. Okay, so <clears throat> I think it was uh, even uh, Patrick said that uh, his little girl was walking around and okay they've got a bunch of cats and this cat has the personality of Barnaby and this cat has the personality of Jellybean and this is Salty um, okay so you're gonna have people think about that okay again Patrick's daughter finds out that the, the opportunity for the cats for her cats to be in book two starlight cats she's gonna be going to Patrick and going you need to do this for me to which he's got the very difficult decision of what does he do? <laughs> so, and then of course we have uh, uh, here, this is a uh, fan art. A fan created the spaceships. And if you take a look, <laughs> not only was the fan rewarded by with having the artwork in the book, when you look at the back side of this poster, Okay, the hang in there poster. Okay, it's by this Bill is B Billy uh, uh, Basco. So this is where I don't know if the fit with the fan did it on their own and gave it to Shane, and Shane rewarded them by having to do the salty ball, the hang in there. I don't know, but I mean, this is where um, if you send in your fan art to an artist you may have a greater possibility of getting work from them even if it's not much it's still exposure as opposed to uh, Disney or Marvel or DC okay and then lastly this okay this is their thank you page they dedicated a full page okay to thanking everybody for back in the book okay this for me is so much more personable than in really really small type putting all 1500 backers names on the page that is so that makes you feel like you're an insens insensitive number to them okay it's a double-edged sword because they want to show thank you to you. And when Kickstarter first started this game, it was a really big deal to put their name in the book. But honestly, when you have so many names, it makes you feel like a number. Okay? Putting in these stretch goals so you had the ability to start out with getting the sticker or a card, okay? And then let it grow and grow to the point where one of the last stretch goals was the hang in there along with then putting in this to help promote the next campaign, okay? these goodies okay for me personally they speak volumes more than your name in such a small text 
that you can't make it out unless you have a micro, micro, um, micro, microfine glass. Okay, so this, okay, instead of using this page for something else, that's what they used it for. Uh, that speaks volumes, in my opinion. Uh, I know I would not be surprised if any other uh, creator who listens or watches this video put, starts putting this in their book. Okay, the only other person that goes this far is Graham Nolan. When I got my Chanu from him, uh, when I opened it up and I was pulling everything out, there's a sheet of paper folded in half, and I unfolded it. And it was a, and even though he didn't sign it, and it wasn't addressed to me, in every single one uh, issue, every single uh, copy of the Chanu that got sent out, he sent a thank you letter, thanking them, uh, and he saying how much he appreciates their uh, backing his campaign. Okay, uh, say how saying it in your live streams. Yeah, is great, okay? But Sh Graham, including that letter, Shane and Yanzi putting this in the book when they could have put something else, they've only put in there, they could have put in our uh, 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 spot, uh, another piece of spot artwork, even if they had taken and used this as a, as a, as a, as a page to promote Inglorious Rex uh, or an Indiegogo. Okay, they use that to say thank you to the person buying the book. Okay, and uh, it's something that it's something to be considered moving forward. I mean, you guys are not, especially when another piece has become semi goal uh, standard is everybody gets is having their book when they reach either they're initially having it as perfect bound or they are. Uh, the heaven is a stretch goal, okay? So, this, okay, with the stapley, this is the Geiger, okay? Uh, issue six, I got it today. Probably one of the very last books I'll be buying. Uh, but you see how, I mean, it's just a regular stapled book, okay? Um, whereas, very possibly the very very last DC book I'll ever get okay is this Aquaman book but it is perfect bound okay and okay it's perfect bound okay like I said the only very very last uh, DC book I'll probably ever be getting uh, because I'm sorry they went too far when what they did with uh, Tim Drake uh, again uh, they're lazy. Instead of putting the effort in to a create a gay character uh, or a bisexual character, it's too easy. It's like, oh, we'll just we'll ju we'll just name we'll just we'll just turn that character because uh, if they don't like it, then they're 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 it's their problem. They're racist. They're istophobes. Um, the only reason why I even got this is because uh, when I saw when I heard that Jose was going to be doing the Aquaman 80th anniversary. Uh, I went to my little comic book shop and asked them, and so they had it put down that for me to get the uh, Jose cover, and so that's the only reason why I was getting it is because that Jose cover, um, Jose doesn't really do much anymore in the past. In fact, moving forward, the only time I'll probably ever be getting a DC book uh, is if Jose gets it, uh, because he is that good and I respect his work that much that. Uh, if there's a protest line, the only way I'd be pa pa crossing over that DC protest line uh, is if Jose was doing the artwork, and Jose doesn't really do much artwork at all. Uh, uh, he's getting up there in age, and quite honestly, he doesn't need to uh, or want to. It takes him uh, quite a while for him to uh, do stuff, and it doesn't have anything to do with his age. It has to do with how good of an artist he is. Uh, that's the reason why he uh, really wasn't ever worn a big monthly book 
was because of how long it takes him to do the uh, do the do the work. Okay. So at any rate, let's get back to the top core in hand. <coughs> but uh, no, perfect bound. It's a standard now. Okay. Everybody has a standard book when they come out when when they come out now. Okay. Um, like I said, the only book that I know of that I came out with that wasn't standard was uh, the 